now it is my great pleasure to introduce this year's winner of the American Chemical Society's Priestley Medal. The award commemorates the work of Joseph Priestley, who, as many of you know, discovered oxygen in the 1770s. <clears throat> Previous recipients of the medal include luminaries such as Glenn Seaborg, Lioness Pauling, and most recently, Jackie Barton. The Priestley Medal recognizes distinguished service to chemistry. It's a fitting tribute to Mustafa El Sayed, who is Regents Professor and Holder of the Julius Brown Chair in the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry at Georgia Institute of Technology. The tireless Mustafa also heads Georgia Tech's Laser Dynamics Laboratory and manages research groups at Cairo University and the National Research Center of Egypt. In fact, Mustafa's story begins in Egypt. He grew up near Cairo, where he earned a Bachelor of Science in Chemistry at Ain Shams University in 1953. <clears throat> He then earned a PhD in physical chemistry at Florida State University in Tallahassee, following postdoctoral assignments at Yale, Harvard, and Caltech. He joined the faculty at the University of California, Los Angeles in 1961, remaining there until moving to Georgia Tech in 1994. In his remarkable career, Mustafa's work has ranged from theoretical to applied and potentially life-saving. He has made notable contributions in physical chemistry, photochemistry, photobiology, and nanoscience. He has studied the synthesis and properties of nanomaterials, as well as their applications in catalysis, solar power, sensors, plasmonics, and medicine. Given the breadth of his interests, it's impossible to give a complete picture of Mustafa's work, but here are some highlights. While at UCLA, Mustafa and his group investigated the molecular mechanisms involved in the storage of solar energy by bacteriorhodopsin, a natural solar energy photosynthetic system similar to chlorophyll. They determined how this natural photosynthetic system controls the rate of conversion of light to energy. Mustafa also developed many experimental techniques for examining molecular processes, including several spectroscopic and mass spectroscopic methods. Later, at Georgia Tech, his group published the first synthesis of colloidal metal nanoparticles, having a variety of shapes, and he suggested that those different shapes could have different catalytic properties. In subsequent work, his group discovered that nanoparticles with sharp corners or edges or with rough surfaces are better catalysts than rounded or smooth nanoparticles. Mustafa's group is credited with being the first to develop practical syntheses of rod-shaped gold nanoparticles with very narrow size and shape distributions. The photothermal properties of these nanorods provide the basis for a gentle method to destroy cancer cells. And Mustafa's team and collaborators in the U.S. and Egypt are obtaining encouraging results in animal trials by using this treatment. In other work, Mustafa is using spectroscopic techniques to observe real-time molecular changes in single cells as they progress from birth to division, to death. Mustafa's group has already used the technique to determine drug efficacy, follow the dynamics of drug delivery in cancer cells, and establish the time sequence of events leading to the destruction 
of cancer cells. In all, El Syed and his group have published more than 670 articles, garnering more than 74,000 citations. His lab has been ranked among the top chemical research labs in the world. As service to the science community, Mostafa re-engineered the Journal of Physical Chemistry during his 24-year tenure as editor-in-chief, and he served on advisory boards for numerous other journals. He was a member or chair of several committees, including the National Research Council's Board on Chemical Sciences and the National Science Foundation's Chemistry and Physical Sciences committees. Mostafa is a member of the U.S. National Academy of Sciences and the World Academy of Sciences. And he is a fellow of ACS, as well as the Chinese Chemical Society, among other organizations. Additional honors include the U.S. National Medal of Science, the King Faisal International Prize in Science, the Ahmed Zawail Prize in Molecular Sciences, and Egypt's Medal of the Republic of the First Class. Now, after 47 years of membership in ACS, what motivates Mustafa? This is what he says. Exciting science, hardworking students, an encouraging wife, and the arrival of the field of nanoscience and technology when I was supposed to retire. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in congratulating Professor Mustafa El Sayed as this year's recipient of the American Chemical Society's highest honor. Thank you very much. I'd like to, first of course, to thank uh, the American Chemical Society for the honor they gave me or giving me tonight. And for many, many things, of course, we depended on American Chemical Society in many, many ways, in our publications, in our knowledge, our reading, and so on. And I'd like, of course, to thank the uh, uh, Priestley Committee for selecting me this year. And I'd like to thank all of you for the wonderful reception you gave me. Thank you very much. Well, I like, I think I, uh, she, she sort of, our president uh, summarized roughly what, what I'm all about. But I want to go a little bit in more detail in some of the things that occurs in our lives, everybody's life, and, uh, and got me here. And uh, first, of course, I, as, as she said, that, uh, that I was born in Egypt and got uh, my high school education in Egypt. And then come the next step is, what am I going to do with my life? What college should I go to? And uh, in Egypt, similar in a way, um, the, your grades, the final grade in high school will determine what colleges you can apply to and which one you cannot apply to. And everybody, of course, tried to get into the School of Medicine, of course. Well, my, my grade didn't make it, about 2% point below. And my brother said, why don't we can repeat? You can repeat the last year, and you'll make it, I'm sure. I told him, no, I decided to teach chemistry. And uh, uh, there was a, an institute. If you go four years, you get out, and they will tell you which high school you are appointed to work in for your life. You don't have to look for jobs. 
And one of the big problem there, of course, to find a job after you finish education. And so that was easy for me and simple, and I know where I'm going, and that's it. Well, then, uh, then I went the first day to the institute, and uh, the students did not go to the lecture room. They were on a strike, <laughs> as, as happened many times. And uh, they wanted to change the name of the degree. They said, Cairo University get the same amount of science, chemistry, and everything, and they get a Bachelor of Science, and, and uh, uh, we, we get only a diploma of chemistry. And uh, we, got, we are not going to go in. And the Minister of Education came and discussed it with us, and he was a very brilliant uh, person. And uh, so we got all the high-level education in different branches of sciences and, and uh, literature and everything, and opened the whole new university. That's Ain Shams University now, which is really competing with Cairo University, very, very good now. And this way, we get a Bachelor of Science, and we everything like Cairo University. Well, then I decided, aha, uh -huh, I'm not going to be a high school teacher now, but I want to become an instructor in that college here, at this university. I want to really work hard, and usually the top two people, they pick them up to become, uh, what they call it, demonstrators, uh, just like the British. And that at the beginning of being a professor, assistant professor, and then, then go on. And so I decided that they definitely will need a couple of people, and if I work hard, I can actually become one of them. So I really studied very hard, and uh, thank God I did, was able to be on the top there. And I became to teach at the University of Ain Shams, one of the new ones. And uh, then that, that's very good, that future opens up much bigger now. Like many people abroad, they like to come to America to get the PhD, so I'm always dreaming. And, uh, but you know, uh, you, can't, you can't do anything unless you find an opportunity. But the opportunity came to me in a very unusual way. Uh, one day, one of my friends, um, he, uh, he and I were supposed to go and pick him up, and we go and buy something. At uh, 6 o'clock, I knocked on the door, rang the bell, and he opened the door with his pajama. I said, wait a minute, we're supposed to leave at 6 o'clock. He said, well, okay, Mustafa, it'll take 15 minutes. I'll take a shower, and I'll be dressed, we'll run fast. Please come and sit down in the sitting room here. And I was very disappointed, angry, and so I went in the sitting room, sat down there, there's nothing I can do. Then I found a, a newspaper sitting there. I, what can I do? And I just opened it. And I found a nice little caption there, an American professor at Florida State will give two Egyptians two fellowships to get their PhD. And they should have four years of chemistry, three years of uh, physics, and two years of math, exactly what I had. So I told him, can I take the paper? He said, oh, take the whole thing. He said, take the whole thing. <laughs> can you imagine if my friend, that friend, was right in time, dressed, and we ran out, <laughs> I would not be standing here today. <laughs> <laughs> That shows you how our life depends on few points. And, and uh, if it happens, our completely change our own life, yeah. So I came here, and of course, that was a wonderful, wonderful uh, lot for me. And uh, I went and worked very hard. And uh, then, uh, then come to uh, finish all the requirements in the beginning, finish actually three exams of uh, chemistry and therefore I did not have to take any courses in them, only one course I had to repeat there. And so I, um, after two years, uh, gave my, my roommate, uh, Paul, and he's a very, very fine young man, and he said, Mostaf, what are you doing this weekend? There's a homecoming game, and uh, my girlfriend and I are going out, and she has a girlfriend that she does not have, you know, boyfriend, and this is a very important game, we have to go to it, and on. I said, sure, I'll come with you. <laughs> I'll come. <laughs> I'd love to come. I'd love to come with you. So I went with him. I never been in a football game before. That was the first time <laughs> to be in a football game. So she sat next to me to really explain every step. You know, every step. And she was in detail. She was very good. And um, I, even though I m did not understand most of it, but I enjoyed the conversation. <laughs> 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 it kept something going between us, you know. And that really 
get us to get to know each other more and more. And after, after two years, we were married. And, uh, and that, is, that is another story about a about, uh, football game. <laughs> let me, uh, let me see, you know, you can see here the uh, picture we went to uh, Niagara Falls. Of course, this is a wonderful place. And uh, we were waiting for the boat there. And we had a, we had a wonderful show. Most important, I think, she came from a, an educational family. Her father was a math teacher. Her mother was an English teacher. My father was a math teacher. So we're, our background in terms of the profession of the family was very similar. And uh, for this, she helped me a great deal. I mean, I really, you know, we, are, we, are, we really work hard. We spend too much time in the job. And, and uh, not too many uh, partners would, would live sacrificing things. And, uh, but she understood it. She understood I came to this country to really move on and, you know, and uh, many times I felt sorry for it because I really was not much help at all. You know, really bad. I mean, uh, my definition of husband was not good husband, but she understood it though. She understood it. She knew I came here. I really got to establish myself, got to work hard and everything. And so she spent all her life taking care of the children did a fantastic job with them. All of them are sitting here. They all either engineers or <laughs> medical doctors, right there. <laughs> yeah. I think, and, and you know, it, it was wonderful because after all, she knew the culture. So she did a much better job in actually <laughs> trying to take care of them. You know, and, uh, and many times when I tell her, you know, I feel sorry because I don't help you enough, you know. And she said, no, 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 actually, but I noticed that when you sit with them, because of the guilt, you, you try to make every second count. <laughs> I don't know how did I do that, but <laughs> she was just very kind. She was very kind. She was just wonderful. And we had a great uh, family. And uh, then uh, the, the other thing is my academic life. How do I get a job from uh, George, I mean, uh, Florida State? And uh, I was very lucky, extremely lucky again here. The professor that uh, invited me to come over, had to go to Denmark. He wanted to get into uh, nuclear physics. And, uh, and uh, so I got lost. I, I mean, he was the one that supported me. And, but I was about the fourth year. So I talked to one of the committee members, uh, Michael Kasha, who was a wonderful man. And uh, he said, listen, let me see what you finished. So I showed him. He said, hey, that looks good enough. Write it down, defend it, and finish your degree. Then I told him, well, then, uh, okay, I'll think about this later. But uh, I did that, and uh, he was going, was invited by Harvard for one year as a visitor there, and they offered him a stipend for a postdoc to bring with him. So he said, well, would you like to come with me? I said, absolutely, sure, <laughs> I'd love to come. Love to come to Harvard, of course. So that was a very good step, Harvard there, and, and then from there I applied to Caltech for a postdoctor, another postdoctoral position. I was lucky to get it. So I really was building good name of a postdoctoral fellowship. And then at Caltech, I was close to UCLA, and uh, some professor was there and asked me, what are you doing? So I explained to him. He got excited about it, asked me for a seminar. I said, sure, I'll come. Give a seminar. A week later, I get an offer from UCLA. So that another, another uh, number of steps of being lucky here and there, and things work it out. And at UCLA, of course, I worked very hard. And again, the dedication of Janice supporting me. And we had, by that time, four or five children. So it was a big load, you know, yeah, really. I mean, she, she really was wonderful. She, I tell you, yeah, she, gets, she gets this prize, really. <laughs> Here are our children at that time. You can see them, and, and, uh, and she took care of I mean, she did a much better job than I was involved because she knew what, how to educate them well. And uh, every out school uh, activity, she was involved in it. You know, uh, uh, the, the museum at uh, Los Angeles would have uh, courses for young kids and the experiments to do. She would drive all the way from Westwood to, to downtown. And, and uh, each one of them took that course, one month course in science and things like that. 
get them oriented in the science. And she always made them made me look good in front of them. You see, our daddy, see, because he, he does this, you know, he gets invited to go give seminar here and give seminar here. Science is very important, you know. For this reason, you can see most of them here are in science or, <laughs> or doctor, medical doctors, and all of them very professionally. And because of the way she raised them, actually. Probably because they also saw me I was working hard, I hope. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay, well, um, we uh, worked it quite a bit, and I would say uh, the, the next step, I think, would be uh, that uh, uh, I, 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 because working hard at UCLA, I got my tenure in three years, and I got full professor another three years. Six years, I was a full professor, which was the second uh, record at UCLA history. The first one was Don Cram, who actually got a Nobel Prize in organic chemistry. And he was a brilliant guy. I just worked hard and, and uh, was able to get uh, the, the same tenure track. Usually, as you all know, five years assistant professor, another five years associate. But because I was working hard and was lucky to uh, have a few breaks here and there and so on. So I was, and that really was very important to me and uh, felt, felt very good that, that uh, uh, until I saw the question is, I stayed quite a number of years. I could have retired at that point, you know. But then I, 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 the, the field of nanotechnology came about. Uh, and uh, it really excited me quite a bit. And then, and then uh, uh, but at UCLA, there were no equipment for nano at this time. At that time, there was nothing at all. And um, Georgia Tech and the University of Illinois said, hey, Philip, what do you want? And that was very kind of them. But another reason was that uh, uh, Georgia Tech was in Atlanta, which is very close to Florida, where Janice's family were. So going, f we were staying away in California, far away from them and so on. I said, I think the second part, we should really get the children in the summer, get them to meet Janice's family in uh, Florida. Here you go. This is uh, every, every, almost uh, many summers would have them come in and they f stay with them during the family reunion. So our family, as, the, as they're growing and better and better, their children growing, they get to know their family and so on. That, and Janice felt very good with that. And uh, things were going fine until, of course, unfortunately, a very bad thing happened, and that is cancer hit Janice. And uh, you know, one out of four people die of cancer all over the world. So, I mean, it's a very, very, uh, very awful uh, thing. And that, that really affected a great deal of uh, our life. Uh, Genesis life especially suffered a great deal. And uh, uh, however, during that time, I learned a great deal about cancer. And we were doing nanotechnology, studying the properties of nanoparticles, gold and silver nanoparticles. And the properties of these are, they can, you can hit them with light, either it can scatter it back to you 10 times stronger, or depends on the shape and the size, it can actually absorb it and convert it into heat, high temperature heat. And uh, so, uh, of course, after Janice passed away, uh, we started, I started doing more and more of cancer research, started learning more. And uh, so I, I thought that was a good idea, and many people, other people also did, that uh, the scattering, you can use it to detect cancer. If you get nanoparticles, small nanoparticles of gold, and put around it peptide of some kind that binds only to the surface of cancer cells, but not the healthy one. Therefore, if you have blood that has cancer cells and you treat them this way, you just mix them with solution that has gold nanoparticle with this peptide, uh, then if the peptide and the gold sit on the top of the cancer cell with a little microscope, a lab microscope, the biology microscope that you have, you can see this picture that you have there. The two cells on the right are two different cells, and you can see they completely decorated this brilliant light coming over from the surface of the, of the cancer cell, say that this blood has cancer. You can see one cancer cell because of the strength of the scattering. Now, if the cells of the patient or, or, or person does not have cancer, you see the one in the far left where you can see the gold everywhere in solution, but not on the cell itself. It's a dark thing. There is no gold nanoparticle on it to scatter the light. 
So there's a very simple way to, to detect cancer. And, uh, but the next thing is we want to kill it. We want to get rid of it. Well, the other property, as I said, uh, I think I see now if we can go next one here. The other property is that it, it, if, if, well, actually, stay in this property. If it scatters light, if I, if I have an animal that has cancers inside, I can actually detect it. And the reason is, again, send in this little nanoparticle, like draw it in the blood and so on, and uh, let it bind to the cancer cells, and then come from the near-infrared light, not visible light, does not go through our body at all, but near-infrared light can go through our body until the place where there is cancer with gold nanoparticle in it that scattered the light back. Therefore, am I standing in this way? I don't see light coming through the cancer cells. And you can see here the one on the right-hand side, this dark spot is the light is coming from the front of the, of the uh, mice there, and they come everywhere, it comes through the body, but the place where there is cancer will be the one that the light is reflected back, and you see black, there's no light came. But the interesting thing, there's a story about this by, with, with Eric, right, youngest uh, graduate student servant of this, our, our God uh, gift to us, I think. They, um, I, I just signed to him $28,000 to spend to buy a detector for infrared light. So we can see whether the light coming out and how much of it is missing, okay? And then the next morning, he, get, he showed me this. I said, wait a minute, where did you get the detector? So he pulls out his cell phone. <laughs> Turned out, actually, the cell phone camera, it has a little bit of the sensitivity in the near infrared. And that's exactly what was able to do that. Students are wonderful, yeah. <laughs> really great. Very smart people, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, here you go, very good, very good. The next step, of course, is can we get rid of cancer? Can we get rid of cancer? Well, we have to use the other properties. So we have to use the nanorod that does not reflect the light. Actually, it absorbs it and turn into heat. And if it's sitting on a cancer cell, it will heat it, melt it, just finished, you know. So we tried this, uh, and as you can see here in the, in the mice here, on the right-hand side, on this side here, you can see indeed that, uh, that there is a little, little cancer there. And uh, what we did on the right-hand side, we injected again the gold nanoparticle and shine light on it to heat it and to kill the cancer cell. And the other, on the other side there, we just only put laser light on it, no near-infrared light on it, but no cancer, no nanoparticle to absorb the light and heat it up. So it won't kill any cancer. So you see it was time, and you can see now, the one on the right-hand side, indeed, did not grow anymore. If there is no growth, that means there is no cancer. We killed all the cancer cells. And with time, the body will clean the dead cells that are making this little lump there on the right-hand side. On the other side, that was not treated with the gold nanoparticle to absorb the near-infrared light and become hot to kill the cancer cell. It did not do that the cancer continued to grow. So laser alone did not do it, but only when you have a gold nanoparticle to it. So it became very simple, simple medicine, very simple method. The light goes through, it does not leave any scar or anything. We didn't op anything, open anything, you know. So, but now the question is, we have to do it in large numbers, and the question is, where did the gold go? We have to know something about toxicity and uh, uh, by, by, by following out what happened to the, what happened is the blood, of course, goes to the spleen and liver, and those take the gold nanoparticle and keep them. But you have a small, num small amount of it. The question is, does it kill these organs? So we had to do experiments. It took 15 months. Every month, we, we did analyze the, the blood or chemicals, just like you go to a doctor every month for, for, to test a real good health. So we've done this experiment month after month after month. We found that the, the, those, uh, the, the spleen and the liver never changed its size. That means the gold that is there did not kill the cells. The cells are dividing, and that's why its, its size remained constant. If it was toxic, its liver was getting smaller and smaller and smaller, and this method would have been thrown out of the window, exactly. That means it is, it's okay, possibly.
And that, that uh, we, we got money from, uh, from, of course, NIH for five years with the Emory uh, Cancer Research, uh, Dr. Shin there, who joined with us. And uh, we got all these studies and statistics and everything. It looked good for the, for the mice and the rat. But we wanted to go to dogs and bigger animals. You know, you have to slowly, to get the human, you have to go to bigger animals and see if you can treat them this way. Well, we send in a proposal to NIH, and we had a problem because the biggest problem was we, we, we had to have a doctor, a dog uh, doctor and, uh, to be with us, and we got one, a, a very good doctor at, uh, from the University of Georgia. And, but uh, she, in her proposal, of course, she said, look, Americans, when you tell them, I'm going to try a new method, no, sir, not on my dog. <laughs> just do it the same way, just take it out, take it out. And uh, so, she had to calculate that this thing was going to lag at the rate she's getting dogs, and once and the while somebody might give us permit permission, it's going to take a long time. And a long time means also more money, and we, we could not get the money. However, in Egypt, I was always in Egypt when I go there, I give seminars about, about cancer, about the, the, what we found, what this and that, and uh, there was an uh, NRC, National Research Center, um, I give talks there all the time, and I was telling television station, they invite me about the method and this and that. So there is a, a, a sort of an organization, religious organization, where uh, everybody give them money for zakah. Zakah is the money every Muslim, after fasting a full month, has to put a certain fraction of his or her salary to be given to the poor. So this organization was collecting this money and doing things for the poor. So they contacted the National Research Center, told them we'll give you all the money you want if you get Professor Say to actually work with you on getting rid of the cancer there. And so they got a lot of money. And then there was a group, group at the, the university in which I went to the government. I said, look, I need two groups so I can compare what they do. And uh, this way, if both of them get the same results, I, I would believe in it, you know. And the government paid money for the uh, University of Cairo group. And the both of them are doing a lot of work for the last few years now. And one of them was this nice uh, experiment. You look at this cat. There had a huge breast cancer that she had. And uh, they, it was treated this way, inject solution with gold nanoparticles in it that absorb and heat. And boy, twice, they did it twice, three weeks apart. And the cancer was completely gone. And uh, two months after that, the cat got pregnant. And as you can see, the, the cats are, are, are certainly nursing from one of them is the, definitely the, uh, the, uh, the breast that had the cancer itself. So, but they have to do statistics for that. This is very, very important experiment. It's been published from an American journal. And um, they, getting, they, getting, they have to get statistics enough. And, uh, and the, the fact, and the, you know, you don't even see the operation, where the cancer was. Once, because you don't open, you don't uh, remove breast or anything, you just put light through, and the light doesn't do anything in the ins outside until it goes to a place where the cancer is that has the gold in it, and it absorbs the light and heats up that area inside where the cancer is. So uh, obviously it looks, they, they're doing many animals now, a lot of animals. And uh, in fact, uh, uh, the last one that, uh, that I can show you here is the, the next one. Uh, this is the other group. I went to visit them in 1915, early 15. And here, everyone that got their, uh, not everyone, a lot of number of the people that came, they bring in their completely cured and show me where the, the cancer was and there is no effect at all. They don't even notice it, nothing. And um, indeed, so it looks like it is, it is moving in the right direction. And of course, now there is a, a, a doctor, a, a cancer surgeon. Um, and as I, before I say this, you know, my son is a cancer surgeon also. And he's the one that started us way in the beginning. He brought the cancer cells. We're still using the cancer cells he gave us because it keeps dividing. We use it, it divides more, more of them division, gives us replacement again. So we're using the same cancer cell that he gave us. And, uh, and those people show us the different where, and you can't. If you look through the body, find out where the cancer was that was cured, you wouldn't know. 
because light going through doesn't do anything to the outside here. Only when it goes inside where the gold nanoparticle that absorbs that light you're sending and gets hot because uh, the, the body itself doesn't, doesn't have, uh, doesn't do any heat at all if you don't have gold nanoparticles, yeah. Well, so this is, this is really a, a, a short, a short uh, story, I hope. Uh, the, the, the situation now in Egypt is that the Minister of Health uh, said that uh, this gave us a, a surgeon to come and see every result they get and work with us, talk with us. And he said if he writes a report that he feels that things look good the way it is done, then he already will indeed pass it around to other doctors and uh, might, might approve it uh, if, if it is uh, done. So this, this is just the story of thing after thing after thing, and I don't want to take more of your time. I'm sure you are very, very tired by now. And I'd just like again to, uh, the, uh, to ask to, to thank the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the, the medal committee, priestly medal committee, and, uh, and as well as the organizers and speakers of the special symposium at this meeting. If the wonderful, wonderful group of people got, got uh, awards tonight. Very, very good indeed. And of course, uh, I don't want to forget my wife, Janice, because she did pass away after five years. Uh, cancer, one of the bad things about cancer is just, it's just bad. It doesn't, the, uh, if you don't catch it way early on, way early on, and the breast cancer, for example, if, if uh, she caught it when it just a small, very, very little small thing, it could have, have gone uh, and got rid of it. But if it goes up beyond a certain size, it affects the nodes, uh, then the probability that it will go somewhere else and so on and so forth. Uh, okay, the, the, uh, but uh, she, she did, I wouldn't be standing here without her help. There's no doubt about it, yeah. And then, of course, I, I thank UCLA and uh, Georgia Tech. Uh, their, their assistance in each stage was just wonderful. And uh, I, I really thank them. And their administrations are, are very, very good. Georgia Tech now is really just taking care of everything I need. I have a fellowship there. I, uh, chair and uh, he's been helping me a great deal at this time. Uh, DOE supported me for 50 years, believe it or not. And uh, when the, 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 uh, the, the wonderful person that was, uh, he said, Mustafa, we really don't do this work anymore, you know, and they will give you one more year. And I said, I tell you, thank you very much. He told me, don't, don't uh, apologize. I should thank you uh, 50 years. That's, that's, that's a record. You can't. You, can't, you don't, don't. You should. You should blame me for taking so much money from you. <laughs> so, <laughs> with this, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Honey. Oh, he wants to take a photo. Okay. So you'll have to like lean it forward a little bit. Okay, there we go. There it is. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.